welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. And I'm your main man, Sydney Wayne. Oh, Lord have mercy. We're just going to get started with what's popping. So, guys, Black Girl Magic had everyone under its spell at the Olympics. I mean, Simone Biles, the four foot eight dynamo from Texas, is officially the best gymnast in the world. Biles took home the gold medal in the women's all-around competition, making her the first woman in history, I didn't even know this, first woman in history to win three consecutive all-around titles. And she's the most medaled gymnast in world championships history, 14 medals, y'all, 14, 10 of them gold, so she's amazing. And then Simone Manuel is destroying the stereotype that black people cannot swim, y'all. The 20-year-old made history as the first black woman to win an individual medal in swimming and it was a gold medal guys gold medal so she tied with penny oleksiak of canada but with her win she also set a world record in that 100 meter freestyle event at 52.7 seconds so that's like really really amazing and then that's not it y'all then there's rafaela silva she's not african-american but she's afro-brazilian and the significance here is that silva won brazil's first gold medal at the Rio Olympics and she won it for judo. Now she also competed before in 2012 and when she didn't win people were like calling her a monkey. There were all types of people coming out saying all types of really racist things to her and it really got her down but you know what she came back she fought her way to the top and she won gold. So it's fantastic. Amazing. Her. Congratulations. Yeah, it's interesting yes. that the whole racial thing that's happening in Brazil I mean they have almost as bad a problem with uh, mm -hmm. racism in Brazil as they do here. Some people say it's even more so, mm -hmm. just because they have not had a civil rights movement. They don't bring it out. Like when I went to Brazil, um, we were talking about it, you know, among black Brazilians and people, and they were like, you know what, we don't have, Brazilians were like, black Brazilians were like, yes, <laughs> there is racism. But you'd ask white Brazilians and they'd say, oh no, it's about class. So mm -hmm. if you have money, if you, you're treated the same, no. Even if you have money as a black person, there is still that underlying current of racism. That's why they were calling her monkey and all of this stuff. So, yeah. black, you know, anything. everything. It's, it's, it's tough. And they have the largest population of black people outside of Africa. Africa so it's officially heart to heart. Kevin Hart has wed his uh, longtime girlfriend, Emiko. Right? Have you, do you see him on social media? Mm -hmm. Like, she's like uber hot. Have, do you check her out? Uh, she's she's like tall, she's light skin. I'm married. I don't check out women. Oh, stop uh, playing. Anyway. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> they got married in a ceremony right outside of Santa Monica. This mm -hmm. this couple is so social media heavy. It's like it's like hashtagging relationship envy. Like everything oh, that they do, it's on social media, right? So they got remarried. And what happened? As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, poor Tory Hart. Oh, you know okay. because. So Tori Hart is uh, Kevin's Hart's ex-wife. They were married mm -hmm. for eight eight years. They have two children together. They were comedians together. She's a comedian, actress, mm -hmm. and um, writer. They met in college. They dropped out of college together and ran to Hollywood mm -hmm. to pursue mm -hmm. their comedic careers. And then you know it all it all like kind went kaput or whatever dissolved, and, right? And, right. And then it seems like you know. Kevin gets a shot, another shot at that kind of love. love. Then it makes me start researching, like, what's the percentage of men remarrying? Because it always seems like these guys always Are get another shot, and, and these bit old church mamas oh, no. be mad talking about you can't have sex, right? <laughs> so, 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 so there, there was a, a Pew research in two, done in right. 2013 that says 64 percent of men getting remarried, right? Okay. Uh, then later on in life, 50. Two percent of women get remarried. okay, so that's so, not quite the same. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like a lot. That's a big difference. It is, but you know what? Though they're also like I don't know. I feel like men have more of a choice. There are more women. You know what I mean? So? Yes, I think that, that men have so much there's more no, choice, no, and then women are kind of you know left with this shrinking pool and like, well, damn, mm. I don't want that. That's true because you're married. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Conversation it's my man. first marriage too. <laughs> is it? It's not my second. It's my first. Oh, I want to get first a and one. only. Yes, first we like one. that. We like that's that. That's nice. You're hey. a good brother, Sydney. I know. You're painting the blood, but you're a good brother. I know. I know. The main man. The I know. main man, the main Sydney Wayne. Sydney Wayne. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. I knew it. What did you know? What did you know? I knew uh -huh. that conservatives were dumb. 
But <laughs> it's been it's been proven. Well, it's not. It I'm gonna move. Proven. Okay, yeah, because we must. Because I'm not gonna you get, get shot by an arrow. Go ahead. What happens to white people? It's not. It's not that it's been proven, but there was a study released recently that showed that the uh, IQs of Republicans is lower than the IQs of liberals. Now, the, the work was done by Dr. Gordon Hobson and published in Psychological Science. And it found that lower childhood IQs predicts an adult's conservative and racist ideas. And the study mm -hmm. found, and I quote, lower intelligence in children, I'm sorry, lower intelligence in childhood is predictive of greater racism in adulthood, with this effect being mediated through conservative ide ideology. They also found that poor abstract reasoning skills were related to homophobic attitudes, which was mediated through authoritarianism and low levels of intergroup contact." End of quote. Okay. In other words, if you can't reason, you're more likely to adopt the structure and order of conservative values and ideas and beliefs, since they're easier to understand. Right? Now, generally, people with low IQs also have poor reasoning skills. The article presenting this study also referenced other studies that kind of corroborated this. And in one of them, they did MRI, MRIs on liberals and conservatives. And they found that liberals have more gray matter than conservatives in the arterial cingulate cortex, which is responsible for complexity. And uh, while conservatives had larger, larger amygdalas than uh, liberals, and the amygdala, amygdala, I'm sorry, um, controls your emotions with fear and anxiety. So the larger amyg amygdala, <laughs> well, okay, so, yeah, you hear me. so what you hear me having a conversation about being smart and then not fuck up the words, like what you said. <laughs> The point of the matter is, the point uh -huh. of the matter is, uh -huh. uh, these studies tend to prove that um, conservatives have slightly lower IQs than liberals, and that mm. would seem to suggest. I mean, when you look at Trump and what's happening with what's going on, I, it, it, it the study is on point and and I it explains it. that. I get it. Okay, listen, listen. You said you get it. No, no. Okay. The thing is, you know. I feel like as a progressive, we kind of want to kick it up and say, ha, 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 you know, this is what explains everything. But not for nothing, there have always been studies that said, you know, mm -hmm. black people are dumber because look at this and look at the size of this brain and this no, thing no, here. No, so I, I feel like I just, I kind of get a little bit okay. skeptical yeah. when what people try to, like, yeah. like look at brain studies and say, well, mm -hmm. this is why this person is this way well, and this whole group of people. But I guess, so I think, yes, yes, there but, might be people with lower IQs who might be attracted to the structure and more, you know, conservative. But I'm sure there are lots of Republicans who are also have high who IQs. Who are liberals. Who are, no, who have high, high IQs. Where, what are they doing to so rein in the, the aspects of their not, party not that Republican. are making no sense? It's not Republican. That's what it's it conservative is. versus liberal. It's well, conservative. Used. Well, I mean, and a lot of Republicans have to be conservative. But I think, you know, when you, like, you brought up studies that looked at black folks or whatever, I can't ever recall an actual study that showed actual differences in black brains versus white brains. They, they twisted the, 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 um, data, the data to well, make well, it, like one thing, what they wanted to one say. Thing, there's one thing, that's what it there's is. one mm -hmm. thing about twisting data, and there's another thing about actually showing MRI. Well, I don't think so this, what I don't about, but even, brain. so what but even this, I don't think that every person, every conservative falls under this. I would, I, I'm well, just I'm not sure comfortable saying that. Some of my best friends but, are conservative, and I think they're somewhat bright. <laughs> well, yeah. Right, because that's okay. what I'm thinking. I'm thinking conservatives in middle America that come from families that have lower IQ because they weren't you know, trained up uh, in the school systems properly. Like, think about when you're thinking about Republicans. Most Republicans are in middle America. Not most. I take that back. But in trailer parks, that kind of thing. I'm not. We're not talking about in New York conservative, right? Right? Yeah. I mean, if you're I, trained, I get, I, if, if 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 right, come on. But it's lower. But born but to IQ smart is innate. People. No, innate. Like IQ but you're is born innate. to smart people. Smarter people. Right. Well, yeah, but, but, suffice but okay. Well, the, suffice it to say that this study. <laughs> Tended to suggest that the difference in IQ is okay, so by, uh, helps wow. explain liberalism versus conservatism. Okay, so liberals and conservatives. So, what do you guys think about this Clinton fan Foundation debacle, where people are calling for Hillary Clinton to dismantle the Clinton Foundation because of their uh, murky behavior? It, I use that loosely, and then I, I researched a little bit further how they. Um, 
how they operate in Haiti. They mm -hmm. didn't turn over their uh, financial reports like like um, non for profits are supposed to do. The Clintons made so much money um, mm -hmm. individually as it relates to this Clinton Foundation, and and so now people are like, we need to look into this because if she's going to be president, then she needs to disassociate herself with the foundation, and it's better to dismantle. What do you guys think about that? I don't think they should dismantle the, the foundation. I don't see why it, it, it rises criminal. to the level of that. People say it's criminal. There's this book, this guy, Corsi, wrote a book called Partners in Crime, talking all about the Clinton Foundation and how they had sub uh, companies and how they just kept changing the name so that they could But see, that's, this latest thing isn't talking about that. They're talking about this particular um, latest email scandal has to do with the fact that supposedly someone at the State Department, no, someone at the Foundation wanted to get a job at the State not, Department, and and somehow the Clinton people were pulling their strings true, to make that happen. No, true, so, true. But they historically have been cited for misappropriation, mm. bad behavior. So this is just something that came to light recently, but once you start doing research on the Clinton Foundation and how they act in Haiti and how all this other stuff, it seems to believe that it's it's a little suspect, and if she's going to be the president, I think? feel like as a as a as a president, obviously she cannot be running the Clinton Foundation. So she, obviously she has to just separate herself she wants from to give that. It to, just to so, Chelsea, she wants to hand it over to Chelsea. As long as she's not involved in the day to day operations of it, I think that is what's most important because she can't be using her sway in any way to kind of you know boost up. But I the guess the question that would be: Can she still issue. use her sway even if she's not? And call right it the Clinton Foundation. I mean, the fact is her daughter. Right. So and her husband. can't she still have sway even if she's not associated with it? You know, I, I don't mean, know. I, I just think it's so sad that in this election cycle or this, ele this election coming up that we're, our choices have so much baggage. Yes, yeah, so yeah. much baggage. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I, I think you're absolutely right because it's like every week it's like another scandal. Trump said something else that was stupid. Like it just seems to be the same and thing over and over again. And story about Hillary. And so, yeah. That's well, unsavory. So you it's know? like, it's, it's tough, but yeah. Okay. These are our choices, y'all. Um, and you have some choices. Stay with us. When we return, we'll be bringing you stories that are flying under the radar. Keep it locked. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome to What's the 401 Social. I'm Nicole. And I'm Jasmine. And we've recently revamped our social media page. And you can follow us at What's the 401 TV on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and... Snapchat. Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, so this week we started on Thursday. We have our Throwback Thursday picture where we did an interview with Brian McKnight all the way back in 1994. 94. I feel like I wasn't even born in 94. I know. Of... I was literally like two years old. Well, anyways, Brian McKnight, he talked about how he wrote and produced the soundtrack for Jason's lyric, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah. But in other news this week, the Simones, can you believe it? Black Girl Magic. Simone oh, yeah. Biles winning gold medals and Simone Manuel also winning a gold medal. What a great day to be a Simone. I know. <laughs> Simone Biles with her routine named after herself, the Biles, defies physics. And Simone Manuel, the swimmer, just breaking strides. And so much diversity in this Olympic group. So much. And evil Michelle Carter, the first woman to win a gold medal in the shot put since 1960. Amazing, amazing. It's really good. There are a lot of young girls looking out for these older women to have an inspiration or even a role model for themselves to follow when they get older. And also be looking out for us for local events. Um, last week we got a chance to go to the African Burial Ground. Really great, you know, especially with all the events that have been happening with Black Lives Matter. It's really great to go out and see these people that are still there, even in our own backyard, you know? I agree. And our Facebook Live question for the day is... Why are people hating on Gabby Douglas? Don't forget to comment. If you comment, we'll mention what you say on next week's segment. And subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at What's the 401 TV. Follow us on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram at What's the 401 TV. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon.
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 4 and 1. Now we are bringing you stories that are flying under the radar, and Sydney has some tasty news for us. This is the kind of story I wish I could tell more often. What does, or yeah, what does Tyrese, Tiger, Justin Bieber, and Chris Brown have in common? Well, they all love the food that's prepared by the catering genius that is Malachi Jenkins and Roberto Smith. They started a company called Trap Kitchen. Now these two guys are former Trap Kitchen. Trap, trap kit, like oh, Trap Queen, like Trapping. Trap, okay, like Trapping. T R A P. Trapping. Trap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kitchen. Now these two guys are former L A gang members. Jenkins was a blood, and uh, Smith was a crip. But they got together and they started this catering business. And what they do is make food in the morning, okay. right? Put it up on Instagram, and take orders all day and deliver it. That's, oh, right. that's, yeah, that's, really that's cool. great. It's, I mean, it's, it's a very, very positive story. Do right? they, do right. they kind of deliver it to trap houses? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. They take orders on a they trap don't. phone? No, no. <laughs> trap stands for, <laughs> trap stands for take a risk and prosper. So oh, like nice, like nice. Like now, the guy, the food's so good that Tyrese had them do one of his dinner parties. Oh, nice. And oh, wow. so great that Tiger had them do a pool party. So these two guys are really doing extremely well with their business, and we hope things continue, right? They oh, took God. a risk, and they're prospering. Yes. And that's something very positive that's happening in a community where normally you see people gangbanging, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, these two guys were gangbangers. They used to sell drugs, jewelry, and other kind of crap, but they've been able to turn their life around. That's and really I think very that's nice. A, that's I think a that's a really story. great, yeah, really great story. Really did great they, story. Were they cooking before this at all? Like, what did, how did they um, even the, cook and come uh, Jenkins... Uh, like to follow his grandmother and mother around oh, in the kitchen, wow. and then he took a couple of classes in culinary school. Oh, oh nice! Um, Very nice. Crip cooking. Crip. Yeah, he was blood. Oh, okay. <laughs> blood cooking. Blood bacon. But, um, but, blood bacon. But you know, great story, <laughs> great story, and um, we wish these guys oh, all the God. success in the world. Right now, they're operating out of uh, Jenkins uh, Smith's kitchen, mm -hmm. at you know, apartment kitchen. I but think we're hoping to expand. Things, but yeah, how does Justin Bieber tie into this? He, they were at the parties. Oh, okay, okay. And nice. Brown, okay. Right, uh, Tiger's pool party. Okay. And they love the food. Nice, oh. nice. And, they, and they don't have to live at home, right? Yeah. So I have this story. Mm -hmm. It is hilarious. So when is it time to kick your birdies out of the nest? Right? So let me tell you this story. This, okay. This guy, okay. <laughs> I think that if you get shot in your own house, you probably should kick your kid, your grown kids out. What do you think? I think so. I think you're right. Especially if they didn't right. want to shot you. Uh, no, so they didn't shoot him. But this is what happened, right? So Freddie Rodriguez mm -hmm. was home in the middle of the night, horny, two something in the morning, maybe one something in the morning. And he goes on Craigslist uh -huh. and gets a prostitute, right? Okay. So the woman comes into the house, right, and supposed to service him $150, no, $120 <laughs> for an hour worth of service, right? So it only He's lasted about. Left. It okay. only lasted. <laughs> about a couple of minutes, right? So Freddie was pissed off about this. He wanted money. It was money supposed to be back. an hour, right? It was supposed to be an hour, right? Mm, but somebody, okay. you gotta like kind of perform during this hour, right? So he said the girl wasn't into it. So he asked for he asked for the money back, and then he pulled a knife on a woman, right? <laughs> So he put a knife on a woman, and so the woman gives him back the money, okay. and then she leaves. But Freddie doesn't lock the door, right? So her associate slash, I don't know, just friend, maybe pimp, maybe, I don't know, allegedly, I don't know uh -huh. what you are, sir, came in the house. And shot Freddie to the mama. <laughs> and all oh, like limbs and stuff, right? So they look at this. They look at this. They look at this. They look at this. Wow. So they so they call the ambulance, they take take the mother and the son to the hospital. The mother's like, You gotta get the hell out of here, Freddie. <laughs> By the time the lady's treated and top to come back home, she's like, You don't gotta leave now. Right. Listen. But you better find some place to stay. What? Freddie is not going story? anywhere. He's not. That is the crazy story. But he's lucky the pimp wasn't serious. Because he could have killed both of them. You know what I mean? He just shot them in the leg. just wake up and you're like, what? What? Because Freddie didn't... was getting a hookup. <laughs> she, didn't Boy, know, she didn't even know that any of that was going on. She didn't know that. She was asleep. The woman See, was asleep. Um, maybe Freddie needs to you know, make sure his guarantee is in place before he pays his money. No, maybe he should find his own place before he invites Brace. hookers to it's his not... mama house. That's not how you do it. That's not how any of this works. No, not. that's not how it works, how kids. Millennials, let, get your own stuff first, right? <laughs> then do what you want to do in with, your own, in your own <laughs> stuff. That's and get the, yourself shot. Yeah. Not your, right. not your mama. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back with Kizzy and the Caribbean cookups. Keep it locked.
Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back with What's the 411. Now we have Kizzy and we want to know what's cooking in the pot. But before, grab your napkins because we're all going to jump and wave, jump oh, and Lord. wave, jump and wave, wave, wave. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Kizzy. The napkins? Oh, Lord. That's what the I, rag. My, my the cousin rag. and her wedding, we, we, we took the napkins and we were just jumping around. Okay. My uncle from down south was like, what the hell are flag. they doing? I got to get you a flag. What kind of flag? American flag? You can do that. Or you can be honorary trainee with me. Just give me the African one. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. Gonna, represent. I'm gonna go real deep. Represent. I'm gonna go back home. <laughs> okay, guys. Oh my! <laughs> Lord. Okay, guys. So, which athlete can cause an evacuation at one of the busiest airports in the country, Michael and not even be at the airport? Phelps. No. <laughs> oh. The fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt. Oh, he's hot. From Jamaica. Boy, yes. He's strong. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Apparently, people at JFK were watching Usain Bolt win an Olympic gold medal in the 100 meter, and they started laughing and cheering and making so much noise. Someone thought it was gunshots, called the police. Somebody thought it was gunshots in the police in the airport? <laughs> yes. Yes. I saw that. Mm. Yes. And so they thought it was gunshots. The police were called and they had to like evacuate the airport. JFK. Yes. Mm. JFK. Poor TSA. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. It's really crazy. I'm like, okay, wow. You know, mm. people love Usain Bolt. Um, so this medal is his third straight win in the Olympic event. Third straight win. And this is the first time a man has ever accomplished this. So this is like record breaking once again. And, and... Simone Manuel is not the only woman bringing swimming, breaking records in swimming. Naomi Grand Pierre, a sophomore at the University of Chicago, is the first Haitian woman yes, to complete compete at the Olympics in swimming. Surprising, right? It's amazing. I'm like, oh my God. She didn't medal, but she was just happy. She said, in quote unquote, super honored to be a part of the Olympics and she hopes to inspire other Haitian girls to swim. Now, you guys don't, may not know this. I didn't know this. Only 1% of Haitian children can swim. 1%. One percent. One the percent. Water, island. The, the water, too much water around the island. Spice. Is the water choppy or something like that? No, I Mexico? think that, that, you know, part of the um, legacy of slavery is that we were discouraged from swimming. Because you can swim. You can get to some other place. So you're not. We were discouraged. From, yeah, but that was, Haiti yeah, was yeah, the wow. first country in this yeah. hemisphere to end slavery. I know. Yeah, but that doesn't. Well, well, rev revolution, right? Okay. But that doesn't change anything. But you, but you just making a fact. But we're talking about swimming. Did they swim away and get away from slavery? No. Well, the the oh. fact that I'm mentioning. Flawed since reasoning, you bring sir. it up, Miss mm -hmm. uh, McLean, <laughs> um, is that <laughs> uh, it's kind of difficult for me to understand how the no. reason they wouldn't let the reason black people in Haiti can't swim is because. They didn't want them to escape slavery. She didn't say that. Way. She said it was discouraged in America. Legacy, the, legacy, about the legacy of slavery. And, and it's Haiti? also about access, too. It's also about access. It's also they about access. Well, they access. Had access. Well, people, they had access. People, people who actually know how to swim to teach you. If it's come from generations and generations of you not swimming, who's teaching you how to swim? You throw you know a baby I mean? in the water. No. Anyway, and the same thing is happening here as well. So there's only 30%. 30% of people here, 30% of people, it, children and adolescents can swim. So that's only 30% black and white. That's black because they don't, they don't see them in camp. Because I don't learn how to swim in camp. Addition is black. black. We, we got to wrap this up. Just black. black people, 30%. So it's still bad. But wait, wait, one more thing. Carnival fever burning up all over the world. Toronto Carabana, Spice Mass in Grenada. Um, also Barbados crop over, which I went to whoop, whoop, mm -hmm. first time. No Rihanna. And Notting Hill will celebrate its carnival in London in a few days. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised.
practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. And we bid farewell to world-renowned herbalist Alfredo D. Bowman, known to millions as Dr. Sebi. Recently passed away in Honduras, Dr. Sebi spent decades studying a natural approach to curing diseases and ailments. Also, ESPN Sports host John Saunders has passed away at age 61. Saunders was a former hockey player for the Junior Hockey Leagues of Montreal, Canada. His longtime colleague, Chris Berman, stated, quote, with John Saunders, you knew you were in special company, close quote. And multi-talented instrumentalist Jimmy Levine has died after a battle with cancer. Levine worked as a keyboardist, saxophonist, and producer with such greats as Al Green, Marvin Gaye, and Herbie Hancock, just to name a few. R&B legend and Memphis nightclub regular Ruby Wilson, the queen of Beale Street, passed away following a heart attack. She was 68. Now prayers go out to the families and friends of the mus the mosque leader Mulama Okanji and his friend Thara Uden. They were shot at point blank range. I know you guys heard about this. Um, and the gunman fled the scene. I just I'm just waiting for this public outcry internationally as well as nationally. And, and that I'm not seeing. I'm just not seeing it in the media. And I just keep thinking to myself. If this was a Catholic priest, if this was a Catholic priest, this would be, we need to really look at how we yeah. are viewing our Muslim brothers and sisters. Yes, We yes, need to definitely. really, we, we, we really need to. Um, our prayers go out to them again, yes. and we really need to stop this violence. It's senseless. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the 4 on one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatstheforeonone.com, and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 on one TV. Yes, please check us out, and we just might mention you on the show. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Amika McLean and Sydney Wayman, thank you for watching What's the 4 on one We will see you next time.